This is Dale Hansen's Sports Special. Hello, everybody. We do sport from here on. When he stepped to the microphone for the first time in Texas, Dale Hansen changed the world we knew. The former radio disc jockey turned sportscaster from Logan, Iowa, debuted at WFAA in Dallas in the spring of 1983. David Zerowick, writing in the Times-Herald, said Channel A Sports Special will be a real good show if Dale Hansen can stay out of the way. People say I'm a smart aleck, I'm a jerk, I'm opinionated, I'm controversial, and unfortunately they're probably right sometimes. <laughs> Hope I can do that when I'm 76. Right now, I just want to be 36. <laughs> it was fun to go to Cowboys training camp and say, whose skin is he going to crawl under this time? Well, maybe I don't. Oh, we, we make it all up. You do, you do. You're the guy who told us last <laughs> week, walked up to Jerry. Do, do me a you, favor. You said that Tony Casillas had a brain tumor. You guys manufacture everything. I did you not do that. I asked the question. People just don't realize how difficult it is to work and live in Dallas and regularly push back on not only the Cowboys, Boys, but Jerry Jones. 72% of the people that we polled say they have a favorable opinion of the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, think how good those numbers would be if you'd like won a playoff game this decade. Well, maybe there's some method to my madness when you get that. <laughs> Just keep keep that bait out there. Dale is the uncle, uh, cousin, brother we have that in any holiday you can count on to say what all of us are thinking. Dale has grown into the kind of voice that inspires all of us in our industry and certainly here at WFAA to look for more original, authentic voices just like his. SMU has received the toughest penalty ever given a major college football program. The death penalty banning a collegiate football program from competing for at least one year has been given out only once to SMU in 1987. It was the result of WFAA TV's exhaustive investigation into the university's pay for play scandal in the 1980s. With Hansen at the wheel, the station took on the university and some of the most prominent political leaders in the state of Texas trying to get to the truth. We asked Henry Lee Parker what contact he's had with the Stanley family. I have never met his mother and father. He says you paid him. No, Dale, that is wrong. Entirely. Did you ever send money to his parents? No. Is that your letter? The one in your left hand, really specifically. The one in the left hand, specifically, with your initials on the SMU that stationery? That is mine, yes. Did you write it? Everybody was lamenting, oh my God, the death penalty, the death penalty, the death penalty, you know. And then all of a sudden, Dale Hansen popped up on the screen, and he says, well, you know, uh, uh, they do kill you in Texas. I mean, the minute I heard that, I just spit out my food laughing so hard because, first of all, it was true. Secondly, it was funny. And thirdly, it was direct and to the point. And that's what I came to expect from Dale Hansen. In the 1990s, Hansen started going unplugged, using his microphone to challenge us to see that power and privilege can see nothing without a voice. And if you don't think white privilege is a fact, you don't understand America. Dale's Unplugged is, is must-see TV. I don't ever remember seeing one that didn't make me take a step back and say, wow, I never thought of it quite like that. You know what? He's right. If Hardy knocks on your front door to take your daughter out for a night on the town, the man you cheer now, you would shoot his ass through the glass. In a country where people of color are six times more likely to be incarcerated than white people, where rank is often based on race, sex, and wealth, his commentaries beg the question, where's the acceptance if you only love those who are just like you? In 2014, University of Missouri football player Michael Sam publicly revealed that he was gay. I'm not always comfortable when a man tells me he's gay. I don't understand his world, but I do understand that he's part of mine. As a gay person, it, we really do need people like you. We need heterosexual people that, that speak out and say, this is not okay. Mm -hmm. uh, they just automatically assume that a Michael Sam can't play in the NFL if he's gay. They automatically assume that an old, fat, white guy from Texas uh, would be opposed to that. And I think we're slowly breaking down these barriers on both sides. Yeah, I agree. There's a part of Dale that is a defender of those who are weakest. I think if Dale's probably being honest, at least you know, my encounters with him, he, he, he certainly likes sports. I, I don't think sports is what motivates him. America's problem has come to Dallas now, and our lieutenant governor blames the peaceful protesters because our lieutenant governor is a fool. The unplugged 
commentaries have given him a platform to, to really uh, talk about bigger issues. My best friend in high school was killed in Vietnam, and Carol Meyer will be 18 years old forever, and he did not die, so that you could decide who is a patriot and who loves America more. It was riveting television then, and it continues to be riveting television today because it comes from a place of integrity. My dad hit my mom once, at least only once that I ever knew about, but he broke her nose. My dad was a big man, a truck driver, huge arms and one of the strongest men I've ever known. But never has such a big man looked so small in the eyes of a little boy. Perhaps the greatest compliment I could give you is when a young sportscaster asks me for advice, I always tell him, go to YouTube, watch Dale Hansen. I think you're phenomenal. Uh, you're a treasure and a tribute to this industry. And it's been an honor and a privilege to watch you do what you've been doing for so many years. Dale Hansen has shown us at Tegna that there is nothing, nothing more powerful in this world than the well-written word delivered with authenticity and courage. Dale used his privilege of his free speech and the pulpit of that desk on WFAA to make the world a better place. We're very, very proud, Dale, to call you one of our own. He's been honored with the George Foster Peabody Award for Distinguished Journalism and the DuPont Columbia University Silver Baton, broadcast's equivalent of the famed Pulitzer Prize. But for the stories he tells, the wisdom he reveals, and the peers he inspires, Dale Hansen is not seeking honor, just sharing the lessons of his lifetime. His legacy is unparalleled, and there'll be generations that will be talking about the impact that Dale Hansen had.